a thing a man says when he's emotionally attached is the the big one the big one the l word he says i love you Mm -hmm. um for a lot of you women out there you're probably not the person that said it first right usually let the guy say it so i want to tell you from the male perspective it is freaking terrifying especially to say it pretty quickly and early in a relationship to say i love you because It is the most horrendously horrible feeling in the world. And I think some of you can probably relate to this to not get it back. Right. You're basically like, here is my heart. I love you. (laughs) And then you're like, please give it back with the also I love you. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Right. Don't leave me out here on the limb. (laughs) Yeah. So if he says that, you know, he's he's in. He's emotionally attached. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that is a real biggie for sure. It's kind of like my husband says, no man should propose to a woman unless he already knows what the answer is. <laughs> that is true. Um, I mean, obviously there are some that have and do, but uh, that doesn't always go so well. And I, I do think that is, it's it's a, an emotional risk because then a man is really putting himself out there when he says that. Now, the only, I guess, caveat to that would be maybe if he's just like a real player um, and schmoozer and just kind of uses words like that to manipulate someone. But I think those that would be the exception rather than the rule. Yeah, that's definitely the exception. Um, but, you know, look at all these things. The, the player is probably not saying, I'd like to see you more. He's not right. asking, are you having fun? Let me help you with that. He's not rebuilding your Peloton. Right. He's not saying stay over. So all these things are just, um, you know, symptoms of what the, you know, the disease is, if you will, the disease of love. So if a lot of these are just signs that someone's uh, emotionally attached. And then, of course, we still got communication like, hey, are, are we exclusive? Hey, how do you feel about me? You know, are you off the dating apps? Can I meet your friends? Can I meet your family? Um, you know, what are we doing in six months? What's our plan? What's your plan for five years from now? And if all these answers come back to things that are acceptable to you, then great. If they're not acceptable, uh, you know, that's not good. Yeah. Yeah. So I think one of our key takeaways here is you want to read the signs. You want to look for the signs but you also don't want to make assumptions. You want Mm -hmm. to have open communication. And I know that can feel scary and it is scary on one level because you do potentially risk not hearing what you want to hear or rejection. But I believe when it comes to love and dating and romance, man, the truth will set you free. It totally will in every aspect of it. It's Mm -hmm. great. Yeah, like I would much rather have someone know earlier on and be grounded in the truth than be caught up in a fantasy of thinking something is different than it actually really is. Cause that's where people really get set up for heartbreak. That's why there's the book out there. He's just not that into you because so many women just hanging on to like these little scraps of encouragement or this little bit of hope and hoping that the guy's going to suddenly realize how much he wants to be with her or that the relationship's going to suddenly morph into something different than what it is. When we're grounded in reality and truth, it really does set us free so that we can be empowered to make the right decision for us. Absolutely. You know, we, we as, as love coaches, we, we always talk about how authenticity, which bleeds into confidence, is the most attractive quality in both sexes. And there's been scientific studies that have documented this. Um, and so on top of that, the easiest lie is telling the truth, right? So as a man, if you're living in that authenticity, if you're a man that's just trying to have sex and you're saying, hey, I just want to have sex, men don't believe me, but you will have sex more often. And if you are a man that comes out and says, hey, I want a relationship, I want to get married. Well, that's what you get. It's all, you know, it kind of comes back to laws of attraction. But all the way back, it's, it's, it's hinged on authenticity and confidence. And the easiest way to be authentic and confident is to tell the truth. So for men out there that think they can lie and get their way into people's bedrooms, stop. You actually get into the bedroom more by telling the truth. And women, if you're looking to have sex or looking to get a relationship, 
it is so freaking hot if you authentically and confidently say, hey, I want to get married one day or hey, I'm looking for my life partner. Mm -hmm. The right guy like me who right now at this stage of my life is looking for life partnership. If a woman says she's looking for that, I go, ooh, and I get big eyed. That does not scare me away. A man that wants that, a man that's just looking to get laid, he does get scared away. And that's great because that's exactly what you want to happen instead of having some situation ship for six months that ends in nothing. And you call your dating coach and are upset. We don't want that for you either. So just be, you know, put it out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. In fact, I think having deep clarity about what it is you really want. And people think they have that, but a lot of people don't. They're still a little wishy-washy. Like it's kind of like having one foot on the gas and one foot on the brake. And so when you have that clarity from within and you know what you want and you have the confidence and clarity to say the truth, to speak those words, even if you feel like it risks scaring someone off, you're much more likely to end up getting what you want. So it's incredibly important, incredibly powerful. Yep. Yeah. That's right. I agree. What words of advice would you have for people that want to set that intention to find love this year? My suggestion always is treat it like a numbers game, a science experiment, be detached from the outcome until you know, a guy really until you're with the guy for three months, but at least on date six, be totally detached from the man until he shows up for six dates plus. And just keep getting the numbers out there until you find someone that you are enamored with and they are enamored with you and go wild. But one of the key things I think is happening right now too, Mike, in addition to the things you mentioned is that a lot of people, both women and men, are recognizing how important it is to have partnership in their life, that they really want someone in their life. And a lot of people that maybe were so busy or distracted, maybe their lives have slowed down a little bit because they're not able to do everything they once did and they have the, the time and energy to focus on this. And they're realizing it's important in terms of putting this as a priority in their lives. And I work with women, but I've had conversations with some single men this year. And I mean, a couple of them literally were pouring out their hearts to me about how much they've realized, you know, these are mature men, 40s and 50s, how much they've realized how much they want partnership. Because I think it's brought that to the surface, not just for women, but also for a lot of men. And I also think there's also opportunity for all of us to do some of our inner work and to, you know, learn some things about ourselves that can also help set us up for a great relationship. So like looking for the opportunity in the midst of conditions that might seem less than ideal. I think that's what we have the chance to create here. Totally a hundred percent agree with all of that.